All right, so what we're left with now is to implement put. And put is essentially an update. So we're updating, updating an existing resource. So let's go ahead and open up our project that we have up until this point. And we'll get started on our put operation. All right, so we're going to do this in two parts, just like we've done other things. Uh, we're going to update our person persistence first. Well, before we do that, let's go look at our controller and see what put looks like. That's going to help us define um, how we're going to do this in the persistence. So it's going to pass us an ID and a, and a body. So essentially, it's going to say, I want you to update this ID, and it will give us all the information to update. So we're not going to change the primary key, which is going to be the ID in our database. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So let's jump over to person persistence, and we're going to create a we're going to create an um, an update method. And I'm going to copy. Um, well, I'll copy a couple of different things. We're going to do something similar to delete. So let me grab all of that. And I'm just going to copy and paste, get a little bit more real estate here. So we're going to do update person. And again, this is our persistence. And we are going to pass in the ID and the person. Probably use better variable names than I did. So we don't need this. Okay, the first thing we're going to do then is check to see if it exists. And we're going to use similar logic than what we have on the delete. So if it, if it doesn't exist, we're going to return false from this. So it's going to return a Boolean. Uh, we also could have it so that if there was any error in the update, it could return false or pass back a more detailed error code. There's lots of choices here. We're going to just start with something real simple. Now, instead of deleting, though, what we need to do is insert, or actually update. So we're going to do this a little bit different. Um, we will I'm going to copy the uh, I'm going to copy the insert statement. The reason I'm going to do that is because the update statement is similar. It's already got a lot of the data that we need. So let's grab all of this. Clear to the end. And you'll have to watch your SQL syntax. I was, and because we're using MySQL, we've got to do some date formatting there, as you can see. So let's grab all of that. And we're going to place that right here instead of uh, we don't want to do a delete on the resource, we want to update the resource. So we've already verified that the resource exists at this point. All right, and uh, the update syntax is different. It's not insert, so we're going to say update. And um, just to make this a little bit easier, we're going to call this person to save. That'll just make it so I don't have to do a lot of retyping here. So we're going to update. And again, this is just standard SQL. So we're going to update table personnel. And we do set. And then we say basically the field that we're setting and then the value. And we're just going to grab all of those out of the middle of... Um, we're going to grab those out of the object that's passed into us. So these are separated um, by commas. So we'll go ahead and grab this. So just watch your syntax. That's you. You mess this up just a little bit, and all of a sudden it won't work. So we set the first name equal to the person to save first name inside of single quotes. 
and then we do last name equal to, and what you'll see me do here is just go ahead and grab the other values. So the reason I copied all this in is just, just to save me from having to retype all this. So eh, maybe it was easier, maybe it wasn't. We'll see. So we'll grab all of this. And we'll put that on the last name. And then pay rate doesn't get single quotes because it's numeric. So it will just be in single or double quotes like this. Like that. And then start date is equal to, and we got to take advantage of the, the formatting that's here for us. So this is inside of a single quote. So we'll grab all of this. Put it right here. <coughs> And then there's a comma end date equals. And that's going to be all of this information here. Again, we're formatting our dates. So this is just a little update I'm doing and correction on this video. Um, so once we get the date in here, the important thing to remember is that you only want to update the database for records where the ID matches. So we're passing the ID into this routine here. And so at the very end of this query, make sure that you add where ID equals, and then we'll convert the ID to a string and append that onto the query. So again, make sure that you've got this where ID equals the ID that's passed in as part of the query. And then we'll go ahead and let that execute, and again, I'm not doing a whole lot of error handling in here. I'm kind of assuming happy path on everything, so you could put exception handlers in here if there was any error in that statement or any database error that was thrown to take care of that. All right, so that's uh, that should save it to our database. So now let's go adjust our controller and um, we are going to return an HTTP response. So we'll change that a little bit. You'll, you notice that we already changed the ID to long. And um, all right, so let's, this is going to come in as a person coming in from the body, right? All right, so now we're ready to actually write the code for this. So we're going to grab a new person persistence instance and we'll just say record existed because this returns a method um, is going to be update person, we're going to pass in the ID that we got and the person that we got. Of course, again, you could, you could make that name better than just value, more descriptive. That makes your code more maintainable. All right, so we've got that. Then it's a bunch of response work that we need to do, so let's just copy. This will be I, we're going to do the identical um, status codes that we did for delete. So let's drop that in. And that's all there is to it. That should take care of it. So we'll go ahead and try this out. Let's run it. And as long as we didn't make any typos, syntax errors, this should run OK. And we can start up DHC while it's getting launched here. Just 
grab apps and DHC. So let's do a get first, and we're just going to get, um, let's just get everything. So down here we see we have a whole bunch of records. So let's pick on this one right here and update that name. It has F Sam. We're going to get that F out of there. And um, you could update any of the other fields as well, but that's the one we're going to work on. So, so what we're going to do then is we're going to we're going to do a an update or a put, passing in ID four, and let's go back. Let me grab that JSON. So we want this right here. Want that JSON, and then on our put, we will be updating Sam there. And so let's check this just for a minute. We're going to say API slash person slash four with a put. So we want to update person ID four, passing it this data. So let's send it. And we didn't get any errors, we should get a response back. So we got back a no content. So now let's do a get and see if it actually updated. And that's on four. And you'll notice it is updated. Okay. So it worked. We did exactly what we expected it to do. So that's put. Again, you can add more error handling in here, a little bit more descriptive um, variable names to use. Um, this concludes everything that we're going to go through with the rest, the basic REST verbs. We'll be talking about uh, documentation, how we add documentation into our, our uh, web API project here shortly, but hopefully that gets you started with the basics of add, modify, delete, and update in a database using REST and ASP.NET Web API. It's pretty cool, pretty easy to do. Hope you enjoyed it.